Hey, what's up? This is Nick, Infrasonic Audio, creator of the Warp Core. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at how to use Warp Core to create some acid bass type sounds like you were hearing in the intro, uh, and a couple of other things about some of the features of Warp Core. It's not going to be a full in depth video of every feature, but more sort of like a recipe for how to use some of the features of Warp Core to create that type of sound. So, for those that are not familiar, uh, Warp Core is a stereo phase distortion oscillator. It uses a technique called phase distortion as well as phase modulation to create complex digital oscillator tones, basically starting from a sine wave. Uh, this is really quite different from the approach of subtractive synthesis, which is more commonly associated with acid bass sounds. A 303 is a subtractive bass synth. Uh, you got an oscillator, an analog oscillator, a sawtooth or a square running through an analog filter with a resonant peak and modulation of the filter with an envelope gives you that acidy bass tone along with how you sequence it. Of course, the glides and everything are very important to the acid sound. So with Warp Core, uh, we're going to be taking a totally different approach since Warp Core is a completely different type of synthesis method. And we're gonna break down kind of how to get from some of the tones that you can get with Warp Core using the Warp Modes all the way to uh, more of a complex acid base type patch uh, that's a lot of fun to play with. Before we move on, just a little bit about the patch I have going here. So I've got the Arturia Beatstep Pro, a little bit out of frame, uh, that is patched the volt per octave from one of the sequencer tracks into the volt per octave signal on, or uh, input on Warp Core. And then I've got the gate input on the Clavis Quadigy, um, just the first gate input, which is normal rightwards. That's coming from the same sequencer on the Beatstep Pro, uh, the gate output of that sequencer. The envelope from there is going into the amps, uh, which is a dual VCA, also normal rightwards. And then I've got the audio, currently just mono, from Warp Core uh, out of the zero degree output going into input A here. Uh, because this is normal rightwards, we get two channels out. Although for now, they're going to be playing the same thing, same signal in both channels, so it's effectively a mono patch at this point. If I play notes on the sequencer, we can hear notes coming out, and we see that in the scope there. Um, right now, everything on Warp Core is turned all the way down. Neither warp mode is activated. I've got windowing off. The PM switch doesn't really matter in this case because PM is down. So in this case, if all of that is true, it doesn't matter what modes you are in, you will always get a sine wave. But if we start to turn up the warp amounts, interesting things start happening to both the sound and the waveform, as you can see in the scope here. Yeah, right there. You get very different sounds depending on the order. So in this one, it's important that we've got sync on A, blue, and then bend on B or red. If I start to turn up, start with bend. So start to turn up warp B amount. You can see that's changing the shape of the waveform quite a bit and giving us a different tone. So what this is doing is actually curving the phaser as it's used to look up the sine wave. And what that's doing as we increase the amount of bend is shaping the wave to look maybe a little bit more like a pulse wave, kind of. We've got one lobe that's big and then one lobe that gets smaller. And we can hear those higher harmonics, that sort of buzzing tone come out when we do that. For the sync, so this is essentially a hard sync. So what we end up hearing is sort of an overtone. The same thing that you might see in a hard sync oscillator using a sine wave and resetting the, the sine wave proportional to another oscillator. So how do we get to an acid bass from this? Well, first of all, they sound cool together. So that's a cool sound, uh, but we're hearing all those crackly things as we change the sync amount. Uh, that's where windowing comes in. And this is a very classic phase distortion technique. If we apply the sawtooth window mode, which is the center setting the switch here, and then turn this sync back up, what you can see is we're actually applying a downward sawtooth amplitude modulation synced to the period of the tone, the original period, not the overtone period. And what that's doing is actually ramping that down, that wave down to zero 
right where that discontinuity happens. So it's actually mitigating the discontinuity. So we don't get any cracklies when we sweep through this. And as a result of the sawtooth uh, amplitude modulation as well, we've sort of crudely approximated a resonant low pass filter. Uh, we've got the original fundamental pitch represented sort of by what you're seeing, that sawtooth shape imposed on there and hearing uh, that that fundamental tone is still there. And then we're adding that resonant peak or that resonant overtone on top of it. So that's kind of like what a resonant low pass filter does. Of course, it's a lot more complex uh, with an analog filter. It's a lot richer sound. There's more nonlinear things going on. Doesn't sound like a very good, nice analog fat low pass filter, but it does sort of emulate that tone. When we combine it, we can start to get some really interesting sounds. That sounds pretty cool. It's starting to get a little bit of twang to it, but it's not quite there. We've got a couple more things we need to do. So the first thing we're gonna do is modulate that warp A amount, the sync warp mode, which is giving us that resonant peak sound. So I'm taking the second envelope output of the Quadigy, uh, which is using the same gate from the sequencer, and I'm patching that into warp A. You can use the same one if you don't have a dual envelope or anything like that. You can use the same envelope that you're using for amplitude uh, to also modulate warp with a little bit of less flexibility to shape the sound. To have the maximum amount of flexibility, I'm using a separate envelope with its own settings. So if I patch that in and start to turn up the attenuverter here, now we can hear that I've effectively used the envelope to modulate that overtone, which is kind of like changing the cutoff of a low-pass filter with an envelope, which is how you would make a classic acid bass sound. Uh, so if we play the sequence now, by modulating the sort of neutral point, the starting point of warp A and the amount of the envelope via the attenuverter and the decay time, I've got this mapped to the decay of that envelope, we can get... Some pretty interesting sounds uh, start to come out. So we're well on our way to that squelchy, acidy type of bass sound, but there's one more kind of ingredient missing. It's sounding a little bit thin, um, a little bit sterile. So to really get that nice, thick acid bass sound, there's two things we're gonna do. The first thing we're gonna do to put some finishing touches on this acid bass sound is run it through some distortion. Acid bass, when you run it through distortion, tends to kind of just come alive so you can hear that pretty much right away uh fattens up that sound i'm using the mfx for distortion in this patch i've got the output of the vca running through mfx it's in the distortion program uh, with type overdrive and a pretty high level of drive and then i've got cold mac doing one of the least interesting or unique things cold mac could do and just generating CV proportional to the knob to control the mix. So if I play the pattern, you'll hear even more how this kind of comes alive. Especially once we start adding some reverb, maybe some delay. So that's always a lot of fun. The second thing that we can do to kind of fatten up or put some polish on this sound is increase the low end presence. So right now this patch or this pattern rather that I have going it's kind of 
got some low end there for the first few notes, uh, but the rest of the notes are a little bit higher. Part of that is the pattern itself. You could bring it down an octave. We can do that with warp core here. Hold this left button and turn warp A. Subtext is octave, that's the shift function. So we're gonna bring this, it was on two, and we're gonna bring it down to one. So that's got a little bit more low end. The other option, uh, and I like this one quite a bit, is another shift function on warp core, which is one of the thickness functions. So for thickness, you've actually got two different functions depending on which shift button you hold. For the left one, if I hold that and I turn this, you'll see it fades from yellow to blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and just play the pattern so you can kind of hear this. So the yellow is a sine wave at the fundamental frequency of the volt per octave input. So the fundamental frequency that the oscillator is playing, we're gonna add a pure sine tone mixed in with the phase distorted tone. So for thinner sounds, this tends to just fatten it up, bring back some of that fundamental presence. Um, but we're already in a higher octave, so what we can do on this particular pattern is keep going. And then the fundamental sine tone crossfades to a sub octave sine tone. So now we've got that really rich sub bass one octave below the fundamental frequency of the actual phase distortion part of the oscillator. Now this sounds really nice when we bring in, in, in this particular case for the acid bass sound, when we bring in the distortion. Last but not least, Orcore is a stereo oscillator. This patch so far, uh, the actual sound coming from the skiff here has been mono, even though it's going out as stereo, uh, we're putting the same sound into the left and right channels. If I patch in the 90 degree output to the second input of amps here, break that normalization, well now I've got something that's in stereo. And I've still got that sub mixed in, so it's... With that nice sub bass going on. But what you might notice is that the right ear has a buzzing that the left ear doesn't. That's because of the windowing mode here. So when you window the zero degree output, the taper of the descending sawtooth with the sawtooth mode window ends up at the zero crossing. That's right where the sine wave reaches zero again is where that attenuates down to zero. For the 90 degree output, that's not the case. Uh, where it starts and where it ends is actually in the midpoint of the sine wave cycle. So you get a buzz due to a new discontinuity that's been added to that side. Now, these sides are also out of phase and they have different harmonics due to the way the phase distortion works. So you do get a stereo image, but it's a little bit imbalanced in this case. If we flip it down to the triangle, well, now we're at zero starting and ending in the wave. So it doesn't really matter where the start of the sine wave in the period is. It's always going to end up back at zero and start at zero again on the next cycle. So that just evens those sides out a little bit. You can also, if you have a mixer that can do more than just hard pan, you can also pan these a little closer together so that they're summing a little bit in the center channel, or you can just add them together directly. That sounds especially cool with the other thickness function, which is a detune on the 90 degree output. So if I apply this, now we start to hear that these sides are out of tune. We can go real Reesey with it like that. Or now let's take some of that sub out. So now we've got this detuned stereo acid bass, which is a lot of fun to play as well. All 
All right, so now I'm gonna change the patch and probably just jam out for a little bit.